We are live. I'm glad somebody else got to see Brad's dance. So, everybody, welcome to MI Live. I am Jay White. That is Dr. Bradley P. Dieter. And with us today is Macrozine coach Britt Mullen. Britt, thanks for coming on. Oh. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, darn near perfect. Brad has something interesting apparently going on in his life. It's not us. I'm staring directly at your eyeballs. Well, you're you have you work with two monitors. It's very confusing. I oh, know it's fine. <laughs> so, how is everybody? Britt's good. Brad, how are you? Uh, I'm very glad it's Friday, and I'm very glad Britt is here because we can pick her brain about all the things that we do not know about. Um, or I can just do nothing and let Britt just be like, Britt, go and just see. You how could do that too. Yeah, like one of those Facebook threads and go. So for anybody who does not know Britt, Britt is, uh, Britt, you were a client with Macros Inc. first, correct? I was, yeah. For, for, oh, well, sorry. still am, actually. Still am. But that's how that's how you started out as a client of Brad Morgan's? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you guys lived on the same small little island. We did, uh, about two and a half hours apart. Yeah. That island, Vancouver Island, I, or Victoria Island or Vancouver Island? Vancouver Island. Yeah. I don't know how we, we employ like half the damn population of that thing. We got Brad Morgan, you, Corey, Hannah, Colt. Five five of our coaches are all from an island that I didn't know existed before I met any of you. Kind of an interesting concept. Hannah, Corey, Colt, and I are all within about a 30-minute radius of each other. <laughs> so pre-COVID, did you guys have like major powwows? No. Um which is something we need to change. What? You guys no. didn't have macros and powwows? Not yet. No, nobody something wants to do with. I heard Hannah's a troublemaker. I wouldn't want to hang out with her. That's true. That's the best kind of person to hang out with. No, no. she's She'll just yell at you in Canadian. And <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm oh, sorry about that. Yeah, see? <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, guys, let's jump into it. If anybody has questions while we're talking, ask away. And we will start. So, uh, Britt, you enjoy endurance tra- endurance sports, do you not? I do. Which is psychotic. So, Brad and I thought you would be a good fit to come on. So, let's start. Um, endurance athlete nutrition. Brad, I'm going to have you start. If you had to break down endurance athlete nutrition in two sentences, one of them ending with an exclamation point, but oh you have to use you have to use the word feeling in one sentence. How would you do that? Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a, I have to spend more time thinking about yeah. how I'm going to say it versus what I'm going to say. Yeah, but it's the rule of the game. Um, I would say you need to fuel your workload up appropriately exclamation point that, you can't say exclamation point you have to feel your workload appropriately like that oh okay so i just have <laughs> to like end on an uptick yeah you have to fuel your workload appropriately yes and uh the second sentence i have to include the word feeling would be um if you're feeling like you don't know enough about it hire a macro zinc coach <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? That was that probably the least useful two sentences I've said. But in it was a good. Time. It was good. So it actually so, pretty much sums it right up. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think it nailed it. So yeah. we're, we nailed won't be it. under the same awesome Brad rules of describing for the too long didn't reads. Um, Brit, if you had to, what is the when when working with a client? Do you find that people are more are coming in for nutrition coaching and they are more they're are they more experienced people looking to fine tune their nutrition or are they people who are looking to get into endurance training and wanting to know about the nutrition i've got two sentences no 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 you can just talk that's just oh, okay <laughs> no you're fine uh both actually so in in my client roster i have a combination um of people, I'm actually going to add a third category to that, where we've got people coming in that have many years of marathon or triathlon experience, and they're looking for um, a little bit of feedback to help dial in their nutrition for their performance or to help lose weight while they're training. Um, we have a group of people that are have experimented a little bit. They're kind of new, and they need help dialing it in and making sure that what they're doing is the right thing. 
And then we have the third group of people, which are the people that come to us for weight loss. They get into that and realize this is too easy. I need more challenging things to do. Let's sign up for a marathon. And then we redirect nutrition towards uh, endurance training throughout the process. Okay. Fred, do you have anything? You look like you had something to add. It's just funny. I think of all the articles I've ever written about weight loss, I don't think I've ever said that people said it was too easy. So, but that is funny. <laughs> like you do get that people are like, okay, I want a new challenge. Right. Cause it's like, they, they kind of get themselves in a rhythm of like things are working. So what's the next thing I can add. But, and that's, it's very true. We see that a lot. It's just funny. Cause I've never really thought about it that way. Yeah. What's the next step to make this a little more challenging? Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty much how I got into endurance. So maybe that's my own bit of bias coloring that one. Or maybe you know what you're looking for from the experience. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the, the, the biggest, for, let's go with somebody who is a, not, not a, they, they're running, not even a marathon. They're just an endurance enthusiast. They go for longer bike rides. They, they maybe run 10 to 20 miles throughout a whole week, not in one session, or maybe 10 miles throughout a week. Um, and it's just, it's just fun for them. What would you say is, are, are most of those people focusing too much on the nutrition fine tuning or are they not focusing enough? I think they're, the tendency is to focus too much on the minor details when for the average enthusiast, if we just get the core diet sorted out <clears throat> with balanced nutrition, which is what we want for everyone, mm -hmm. that'll fuel the majority of an endurance enthusiast enthusiasts training. Yeah. That, yeah. I, 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 I agree with that. I, I think it's, it's interesting how many people come into coaching, getting ready to run like a 5k and ask for the endurance training at, at package. And, and I get it as somebody who doesn't run 5k seems like an eternity to me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and after I run, if I, when I have, you know, trying to run a mile, I feel like I need to, you know, carb load afterwards. <laughs> the, the, you uh, need a carb load for the Michael Scott, Meredith Palmer, Dunder Mifflin, whatever for rabies. I can't believe you remember <laughs> that much of it. Yes. The cure for rabies. Um, rabies kills tens of people every year in the United States. Um, so Brad, do you, do you think that, what do you think for the average person, for the person that we were just talking about, the the person, you know, running a cat 10, 10 miles casually a week, biking um, an hour or so every three days. What do you think is the most important thing they can do for their for their nutrition? And or is it not nutrition? That's the thing they need to focus on. I would say they need to match their overall goals with their nutrition more so than they need to focus on. Like, what are they doing acutely to fuel their 10K? or 10 miles a week, which is, you know what I mean? Like that amount of workload can be done at pretty much any dietary approach, but it, you need to make sure their overall nutrition goals are matching their overall goals and not just the specific run that they're doing that week. Yeah. And, and, and goals, I think that also comes into, you know, we, we have people who have multiple goals, right? Everybody, I think every client has multiple goals. They might come in with one, but then once they talk to a coach, uh, they, they realize that, oh, I have like seven goals actually here that are, that are tied into one, um, which, which do you find, and, and I'm, I'm just going to break them down in, into three simple ones. We can add more, you know, the typical goals, you know, I want to run, I want to lose weight. I want to run a, a half marathon. Well, you also want to lose weight and you also want to build muscle and you want to do cardio. So we have three goals, um, on average, Brit, which do you think, and it might vary. There's a big blanket statement. Which do you find that people come in saying they want to do, but their actual goal is, is their actual goal what they're saying it is, or is their actual goal something else? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that um, the majority of the time people come in with a goal and their actual goal is something else. Yeah. And do, I mean, do you think that, so when you have somebody come in who says, I want to, you know, I, yeah, I want to lose weight. I want to build muscle. I want to, I want to run uh, my, but my big major goal. I want to go from, I want to get into this 5k. I want to get into this 10k. Do mm -hmm. you, do you think that, you know, let's it's, it's just an average person. They could probably lose 10 pounds. They could probably, they've never lifted weights. They just do random cardio. 
which do you think is the most beneficial in their overall picture? As far as which goal to focus on first? Correct. Um, yeah, because we can focus yeah, on what, at the same time, but the primary that's going to give them the best bang for their buck. I almost always say weight loss. Mm -hmm. Get it done and then get on to balancing the rest of your life. Yeah. Agreed, Brent. If, if we have th three, three goals, if, if you have weight loss, endurance, and a muscle building goal, which one would you say would be the best bang for your buck? Um, I would, I mean, yeah, I would agree with Britt. I think if you have a substantial amount of weight to lose, focus on that first. Um, because then the endurance becomes easier. Mm -hmm. Your likelihood of injury is much lower. Um, and your ability to build muscle mass is a lot more efficient. Um, on the flip side, if you have like maybe five to 10 pounds to lose, I maybe would focus on the endurance first. You know, if you have a very small amount of weight to lose, you can sort of use the extra workload to achieve that. But it really depends on kind of what your total weight loss need is. Yeah. And I think timeline too. You know, if someone says, I've got a, there's a 10K that all my friends are doing in a couple of months and I want to do that then maybe the priority is going to be getting your training in. Um, if it's, I want to do a 10K a year from now, well, we've got lots of time to work with. So sort of what are the time parameters around the goals that we're setting? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And and Britt, if, oh, wait, hold on. We have a question. We have we have a couple of comments. We have an O oh snap from random Facebook user who we don't know who it is, which I believe was Hannah. Uh, Dante said, good vibes. Christy waved. Uh, we have two people live on the YouTubes, just so we you do. know. We had four earlier. We have at least four. Two. We have four on the YouTubes. Do we? Uh, Rachel said, hi, Britt. Hey, Rachel. And then we have Lisa with a question, and she said, I am not sure which coaching I should sign up for. Uh, I want to tune into my nutrition, but I feel like fitness training is part of it. What do you think? Uh, which is actually funny because we just talked about that. Um, so... Britt, which would you, on a blanket statement, because we just kind of talked about this, which would you say is, uh, what do you, what would you recommend? Well, this is where I'm going to kind of contradict my previous statement and say sign up for the fitness because we can achieve multiple things or we can work towards multiple things. Mm -hmm. And um, the fitness comes with nutrition. So if you're the kind of person that feels like you get very easily overwhelmed, then you might focus on the nutrition first for a month and then we can upgrade into fitness. If you feel like you've got a pretty good handle and you're ready to take on a few different things at once, then sign up for the fitness. We can dial in nutrition and um, work on creating habits around the training at the same point. One of the things I, I talk to clients about is when it comes to training for the average person, they're, they're pretty new and they're not quite sure what they're doing. And so there's a learning curve where we're not going to be making the most of our efforts as we learn how to perform the movements properly. So while we're dieting, we can learn on, we can work on our form and get our routine styled in. And then as the dieting phase finishes up, we're primed and ready to go towards a muscle building process. If that's the second goal. Yeah, no, I uh, completely agree. Uh, I think the muscle building process is such an overlooked aspect of endurance training. You know, cyclists typically have just these giant legs and then that, and it's just from cycling and they're, they're disproportionate based on what they're moving with the bike and they don't have giant upper bodies. And then you have runners who are, are not training any, they're, they're just moving their body weight. They don't get that increased resistance like a, like a cyclist can. And I, I, I remember the first, uh, the first endurance athlete I worked with in, like there was such a resistance to weight training there um, mm -hmm. that it was unbelievable. But once you add it in, you get so much more benefit to it in the long run, I think. You do. Yeah. So, so Britt, if somebody was like, wow, that, that woman is really smart. And I think I want her to run my nutrition programming for my endurance, my nutrition program for my endurance training. Where could somebody go to get a hold of you? Where would be the best place you think for that? Uh, the best place would probably be our website, macrosync.net. And on there, you'll find our coaching options. Perfect. Look at that. You caught on fast. Yeah, you didn't even have to coach her how to do that. Yeah, no, she just did that. That was good. So, any Brad, where would you recommend people go for for if they want to sign up and work with Brit? 
I would probably recommend they go to macrozinc.net slash services. Oh, so I know, oh, Brad, oh, you it in. And then <laughs> they should click the button and sign up and we will get them hooked up with a coach. Yeah. Brit, that's I'm what not. I would. That's yeah. exactly what I would do. Yeah. So yeah, Lisa, I've... you have two steps. Go to the website, click the button and get your free, free two week trial. We can get you set up with, with Brit or one of the other coaches who do endurance um, and uh, training training. So we have different packages, but to get your nutrition all squared away for the average person, if you're an athlete, it's a little bit different, but the average person, it's not, it's not, it's not too complicated. It's something that we can walk you through and show you. Um, Brit. Hi, badass Brit. We got a, a nice hey all caps. Don't forget. It's all caps. No, no, it's high badass Brit. Is that exactly? <laughs> That's also fairly accurate. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to our second topic. And I don't have it typed up. Oh my god, I messed up. <gasps> I know I got too involved, and we were talking about endurance, and I started freaking out and having an asthma attack. It got bad. All right, second endurance topic for Brit, and this is starting out with endurance training. So. For anybody who is just getting started, and and I'm going to refer, Brent and I have talked about this previously, like the the couch to 5K kind of thing. Let's say I want to, me personally, I don't run. I've never run. Even when I played hockey, I was a goalie. So so endurance movements are way out of my realm. Um, Brent, if, if, if I came in and said, you know, yeah, we can work, you know, I'm a regular client. I, well, I want to do this. I want to run a marathon. And I, 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 I do no cardio. How? Is that a good idea? And what time frame are we looking at to actually get me to a reasonable area where I could potentially run a marathon? Well, it it really depends on uh, your goals. If you're looking to perform within your age group or if you're looking to just accomplish the marathon. Um, one of the things I didn't realize when I ran my first marathon was that people walk a good portion of the actual marathon. Most people don't run the entire thing. so there's a pretty good um, window of fitness that you can have in order to actually finish it safely. Yeah. If you're looking to perform coming from a zero cardio background and assuming you're at a healthy body weight, not, not too mm. overweight at this yeah. point. Um, Gee, thanks. I said this was me. Thank you. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> I <lost it> <laughs> um, <laughs> in that case, Jay, you're going to start just by going up the stairs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three to four months is, is probably your typical uh, training Good. program for, for a marathon. For a half marathon, we could trim it down to maybe three months. Um, You're telling me you could get me half marathon ready in three months? Yeah, 12, 12 to 16 weeks if you have the availability to actually <laughs> start your training. How, on average, let's say the first month, how, many, how long per day and how many days per week am I going to have to run? Oh, you're making me think about training programs. For someone who's um, got no background, I would say not more than not more than four times per week. Three right. times is probably better. And I would start by saying, just show me what you can do. Not so much running, but walking and running intervals. So, can you go out and walk a brisk thirty minutes, or are you huffing and puffing? I can and then walk, we go from I can there. Walk like a badass, I can walk all day. Awesome. <laughs> so then you probably have a reasonable endurance um, base as far as that goes. <clears throat> or I'm just really. Stupid. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect sessions to be longer than a half an hour. All right, let's do it. Brett, you're coaching me for endurance training. I'm going to get. Oh, no. I'm not going to actually compete in a marathon. I have zero desire to do that. But we will get me up to a half marathon pace. You know what's crazy to me is that you can take a person from. A f that's pretty much full sedentary life to 13 miles in 12 to 16 weeks. Like and, and, and that's, that's exactly mind blowing. That's, and that's what's mind blowing to me too. And that's what I was thinking. So we're going to. That's kind of where I said, it depends on your goals. If you're looking to perform age group, it's a little bit different than looking to complete, but yeah, it's, it's a two hour, like a, a typical marathon, half marathon is a two, two and a half hour type event. And, um, Doing walking and running in, in, doing walking and running intervals, you can you can complete it pretty safely. Okay, I just can never. What do you think about when you run? I can't. I I just can't do it. Like I, I just get so bored. That's why. Jay, I, you can just recite the entire Declaration of Independence over and over and over again. You think about 
we the people of the United States are reform our country and establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility. <laughs> and promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty. Do ordain and establish this constant. Oh, that's the Constitution. Never mind. I, uh, in Congress on this day, July 4th. I'm glad I, we were just talking about something important and we just railed that off. Well, you, you said recite the Constitution. Sorry, Britt. I said you can do that while you're running. So what do you think about? Like, I, I don't, that's what always drives me nuts with cardio. I, I'm focusing on my breathing and dying and I can't listen to anything. I'm focused on what I'm that's listening to. That's pretty much what you want to be thinking about, actually, is your form and your breathing and not dying. Well, that sounds horrible. Why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> because you're out getting off the couch, breathing in fresh air, hopefully. I think you're in the city, so it's not quite as nice I'm, as my I'm beautiful just, community. But um, you can listen to music. Music is great. Uh, podcasts are fantastic. I believe there's a pretty good one out there with Macro Zinc. Um, <laughs> yes Rich fishing totally for unsolicited yeah somebody's fishing for a raise here <laughs> working on it um so I, I the first time i started i listened to a lot of podcasts a lot of audiobooks throw netflix on without the video of course um music and then there'll be times where you've just got that going on in the background and you're not really think, thinking about anything i like that you know what was when I used to do in endurance training, the hardest part for me was like, I don't really like listening to music when I'm running, but I would get the sound of my feet hitting the ground would drive mm -hmm. me bonkers. So I would like wear headphones and just put on like white noise. Cause and just my feet by slapping by. against the ground was like, this is, this is the most annoying thing I've ever done. Just listening to my feet hit the ground. Yeah. You just kind of check out. It's nice. I don't like to sweat or breathe heavy or get my heart rate elevated. So you basically so need to live we... in the Wally universe. Yeah. Why are you wanting to do a half marathon again, Jay? I, have, I, I don't want to. I just think it's really cool that somebody can go from couch to nothing. So I'm going to do it to just say some, I did it. Jay, you're going to have to live vlog this. That's what I was kind of getting at with it. Yeah. We'll just do it. Like a but, but here's what I, so I have a GoPro. I'll just wear the GoPro on my chest and we'll just take screenshots of me dying. Um, but I think, Brad, we need to invent something that can go over my shoulders and hold a smartphone right here so I can watch Netflix while I jog. Oh, they have those. Like a horse on a carrot? Yeah, they have those. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, for sure. 100%. Man, wish I would have known that. Don't they make sunglasses that you can have a video monitor? Yeah, they make Like Google Glass? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's get that. Google Glass. Brad, so can you in... in, in in six words, can you describe the importance? Uh, can you, in six words, can you summarize what Britt said? In six words, can I summarize which which or aspect of what Britt said? Um, how to start out with an from the topic starting out with endurance training in in or yeah in six words or less. Uh, steady, systematic increase in training volume. Oh, look at you. Wow. wow. Dude. That, ah. was, that, that, was was really, that was really good. This is the this is my favorite game ever. That was a really good one. I'm impressed. We got some questions. We got a lot of comments. Holy crap, this thing blew up. Britt, you Britt is basically awesome. the the celebrity of this show. Uh, uh, Lisa says she's on it, doing it now. Only has five ten. Oh, she's signing up. Well, Lisa, I'll be. Britt looks like Britt looks like you had another client. Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, just also, so you should know why we're on this podcast. Somebody texted me saying their friend signed up a couple weeks ago and they're loving it. Oh, perfect. So I got that live on air. I just thought I'd share your share. With you. <laughs> I'm gonna switch our view real quick to see if. Whoa, that's really zoomed in on. I have, Brett. I have to like put my head in the middle or it gets cut off. Yeah. Brit's camera looks Brit is the only one with like she's on a phone right now and hers is the only one that has like good resolution right now. <laughs> yeah, I use my phone instead of my laptop. My laptop camera is awful. Oh. Yeah, phone cameras have way higher resolution yeah. now. It's crazy. I have a 1080p webcam though. I bought a new I bought an external one, Brad. Mm, okay, uh, fancy boy. Uh it, oh, I know it's not it's not Josie. It's Josie Potter. It's not Josie, is it? Wasn't it pronounced different? I think it is. I 
thought it was pronounced different. Okay. Uh, I, Josie Potter, I signed up to do the Disney half marathon in November. And despite New York City, Boston, and all Ironman races being canceled for 2020, Disney is giving me crickets. I was not a runner and started training in April, seeing great improvement to date, but just don't want to continue running anymore. Sigh. I want to lift heavy shit and put it down. Yeah. That's, that's way more fun than running. I mean, I do have a question. I don't understand what the crickets means. Does that mean like they're not responding to her or? Yeah, I, I, and I can tell you from from I had a Disney trip planned in the beginning of COVID, and Disney was silent on everything, like trying to get a hold of them, trying to everything, and they they're rude. Yeah, and then when I did cancel the trip, I I didn't get I got like a confirmation confirmation email that just said your trip's been canceled, and then I got a refund. And I've never I've never heard anything else about them from them. Hey, it's like the uh, the book you're reading about customer service. Yeah, yeah, they they absolutely. I mean, and I wasn't mad. Like I wasn't. I just canceled. They gave me a refund, and that was it. No questions asked. No nothing. Expedia, on the other hand, uh, did not. They they told me I would get my refund for my airline tickets in 30 days, and that was four months ago. And I still have not heard back from customer service after eight contacts. So, you know. Uh, me and Jesse are going to do a uh, half marathon together next year. No, no, this is a one time. Yes, no, so you're doing it. You no. committed to it live on air. Do you remember when I? Did I will a, find you five tough mutter million and dollars. Like, I did a tough mutter and that was bad enough. Dante, when I was 21, I stopped smoking and started running until I was able to run 5K or more with my brother. I loved it, but my knees did not. So are my knees going to be destroyed? Depends. Running's pretty hard in the joints. Oftentimes, when we have joint issues, it's either because we're trying to increase too quickly with the volume. We have um, incorrect shoe support or our running form is just not what it should be. So when I started running and swimming, I thought, well, I can swim. I can, well, I can't run, but I'll learn how to run. And I thought, I'll just go out there and move. And I realized that there's actually quite a lot of skill involved to swimming and running and, and cycling too, obviously. Um, so when you said, Jay, that, you'd go out and run and you're just thinking about your breathing. That's actually a pretty valid point that when you're starting out running, not having music on and just focusing on having proper foot strike, having proper posture, having proper ergonomics and breathing, that'll make you more efficient with your run. Huh. But then I have to think about me and I don't want to think about me. <laughs> Sounds too challenging, but it makes sense. It does. I, an injury, I don't feel like hurting my knees. So. There's a lot of technique to it that um, if you just go out and move, you might miss. And you might be totally fine, just like people can go out and diet and lose weight. But if you want to do it efficiently, having proper form is important. Yeah, because I definitely don't. I mean, my runs are... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, Jesse listens to music, uh, to some great beats and just go. With Brit as your coach, you won't die. She'll prepare you, and you'll crush the marathon and maybe even become a runner. I will never become a runner. Um, who Jay, would, you may who be the most run? epic endurance runner of our lifetime, and you just yeah. don't know it yet. No, no, no. I'm definitely a uh, an explosive movement athlete. Uh, who would ever have thunk that I – like? <laughs> think of a goalie. It's like explosive side-to-side -side movements, no more than 30 seconds of activity until the puck comes back down. Oh, okay. Um, would you ever have thunk that I would have got out of my bed in rain and go running? Let's do it, Jay. I'm not running in the rain. I'm, no, rain days. I, I'm like Newman for a while. I don't work in the rain. You're a rain I day. used to think the same, too. And then I went out running in the rain and went, huh, this is actually kind of fun. No, it sounds horrible. It sounds awful. I don't, I don't even like to be home when it rains. It's too, I mean, inside is still too much close to rain. So what do you do when it rains, though? cry i mean you're you have to be inside or outside but you don't want to be inside and you don't want to be outside so where are you i cry I just inside cry that's that's probably pretty true <laughs> i committed li jay you committed live on air let's do it your knees will be you fine. did what I, I didn't i don't know what you guys are talking about you committed live on air i have no idea what you guys are talking about do it i didn't say what year do it all right this video is gonna disappear with a yeah. technical glitch after our call. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Fred gets it. All right. Last top for the day. Correct. Yes. What is single word answer, Brad? What is and it 
can't, it has to be a real form of cardio, not some made up thing. What is the absolute and no justification, single word answer? What I may, the, I may require some clarification of the question if that's okay. No, 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 no. Yes. What is the worst form of cardio in your opinion for, from an enjoyment perspective? From an enjoyment perspective? That's not one word. Uh, I'm just clarifying the question. Um, hmm. I would say... This is a long pause on a podcast. <laughs> this is a tough one. Uh, running. Okay. Britt, we're gonna now you have to answer with one word, no justification. Indoor. Uh you're both wrong. The correct answer is any. <laughs> <laughs> you are I, I, such I, a scoundrel. Was hoping, I was also kind of hoping Brad would have said sex, but you know, we <laughs> it would have been hysterical. But. I mean, if that's your cardio, Jay, you got bigger problems. Well, or smaller <laughs> problems. <laughs> Or maybe maybe I'm doing maybe I'm, if that's my form of cardio. Maybe I'm living life right. <laughs> We're not a child podcast. This isn't my. This fault. is when I upload this episode. It's definitely getting the explicit check mark. Oh, stop! There's no swears yet. Um. Um. So, what is in, in, in worst form cardio? Like, what is? What is so? Yeah. What is your Brit? You said indoor. So elaborate on that one now. Everything indoor, <laughs> two words. So basically, treadmills, spin bikes, ellipticals. I, I can't do any of it. Um, You're not a Peloton person. Nope. <laughs> you know, walking and going nowhere. Yeah. But and uh, there's there's no air in your face. There's no changing scenery. There's no hills. There's no corners. There's that's, I guess, when you kind of said, what do you think about when you're running? Well, when you're running, there's always the next bend. So when you're tired, it's like, okay, I'm just going to keep going to the next tree. That tree over there, I'm going to run to that tree. And mm -hmm. then you get to that tree and go, okay, well, that tree, I'll go to that tree. Mm -hmm. But on a treadmill, it just goes forever. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Brett, what is, what, what is running? Is it any running or just running on treadmill or? No. <sighs> Well, you asked what was the worst form. So it's like, I would rather cycle, swim, or row than run. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would actually say I, I would have no problem swimming if I had a private, I, I don't like public pools. So if I had a private swimming pool that I could swim laps and that'd be sweet, I'd do that. What I looked now, into uh, the cost of installing a 50-yard a lane. I needed to buy property first, so it was pretty exorbitant but yeah um <laughs> that that's my preferred method too is i'd rather have my own pool yeah it just seems more fun i want one of those uh those jet pools where you just swim and it keeps you in place yeah it just seems fun deeter money um what i have oh speaking of deeter money jay i'm up seven dollars today Ooh, day trading with seven bucks you are a baller market's down a couple hundred so you're doing good i uh, see the thing is the days the market are down you gotta buy yeah can and you got to buy big. So I'm actually, I lied about $9.13 today. Can we modify? Ooh, that's pretty good too. Can we modify my cardio agreement? No. Can I explain why? No. But Just like you, you give me rules on how I answer questions. You, know, you, you, rules. you get no outs here, buddy. Yeah, yeah, they do. Here, you want, you want to see my out? You want to see my out, Brad? There's my out. I removed you oh, from okay. the field. <laughs> <laughs> So can I can I do bike riding? The what's the bike riding equivalency of a half marathon? A uh, like, hundred mile ride. You're lying. Like <laughs> if, like if I were, like if you're if you're entering a bike a bike race, like what's the bike equivalency of a marathon? Well, anyway. let me look it up. Britt, aren't you a cyclist? Bike to yeah, uh, I don't do any road cycling events, so I'm more of a triathlete. Um, oh. So, I mean, if I was going to compare anything just to pull a random number out of my head, I'd, I'd compare it to the Ironman format. So an Ironman is a 100-mile ride and a marathon. So a half marathon, I'd say, would be a 50-mile ride. Yep. 
What it the says, hell? The general doing? rule of, of thumb is there's a one to three run to bike ratio. So oh, is that you, what you were holding up? I thought yeah, you were saying 13. I thought you were saying 13, Brad. Brad was holding up fingers for the podcast, and I thought he was telling us it was 13. I was like, that's a running. So so 50 miles? Yep. I'd say 50 miles. Okay. So am I allowed to do, instead of running 13, can I do couch to cycling of 50 miles? Is that Sure. Brad? Yeah, but I would say... I would say the couch to half marathon is much more difficult than the couch to 50. Right. So let me get used to cycling first. Okay. <laughs> I don't even have a bike. All right. Let me, I have to go buy a bike today and then I'll, can we, Oh, you know what? Instead of that, scratch that I'm going to do, I'll do it. We'll do a better cardio. I'll do, and I'll do it for 200 miles. Couch to horse. That doesn't count. The horse <laughs> is doing most of the work. Yeah, but I have to feed him. That doesn't count. You know how many carrots horses eat? Um, and Hell's all, Hell and Hell and Robert Swanson aren't eating ducks anymore. All right. So, um, Britt, what's your favorite form of cardio since you're a triathlete? Cycling. Cycling? Yeah, you're. I think when when we met when I was at Bridge, you rode your bike all the way down there, didn't you? Um. Or did you drive? I brought my bike. I've ridden my bike all the way down there. Yeah. That was like two hour, a two hour drive, wasn't it? Two, two and a half. Two and a half hour drive. How long did it take you to cycle down there? Um, it was the day ended up being about thirteen hours, but it was a seven and a half out, seven hours on the bike, something like that. Seven and and because I've heard the story from Brad and didn't from Brad Morgan, not not Brad Dieter. Um. That was like right when you started cycling too, wasn't it? That was, you were not. Yeah, like, it, not like I said, like, I mean, that's why I signed up for uh, endurance stuff because I needed a challenge. The diet was too easy. So I said, well, you know, there's this guy down there a couple hours away and a mountain in between us. I want to cycle that mountain and end up on the other side. <laughs> How sore were you afterwards? It was really hard getting back on my bike and riding home the next day. Oh, that's right. You stayed at his house that night, right? A uh, hotel, but yeah. So I went down. That was one way, and then I uh, hopped on the bike, getting home the next day, and it was that was an adventure. Was Brad like, "I'll drive you home. You're okay." No, no, he did say I might be kind of stupid or something like that. <laughs> not Brad. Very much a Bradism. Yeah, not not Brad. All right, we got some questions. Let's get to those. I'm glad you made it over the mountain, though, Brad. I had a contingency plan. I figured it worst to worst, I'd rent a car and drive it home. Yeah, that's that's smart plan. Was the worst part just sitting on the seat the next day? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so so real quick before we get to these questions, so I, I actually don't have a bike and I need to go buy one. And everybody keeps giving me advice. And Brad Morgan says, Ah, just get off your, your ass and go buy a bike, okay? And that's that's his advice. And Brad Dieter tells me to go buy like a sixty thousand dollar custom Ferrari bike or something. That is not true. He's, he, we're going to mute you because you just don't even know what you're talking about anymore. The <laughs> <laughs> You jerk, you can't remove me. It goes both ways. I should never have given you admin controls for this. <laughs> um, uh, quid pro quo. So if I'm going for a bike, I mean, so I'm looking at bikes. I mean, an entry level, an entry, a decent entry level bike is, you know, 400, 500 US. Yeah. But but I don't want to spend that because that's money I could spend on cryptocurrency and and like collecting coins. So what if I go to Walmart and buy and hear me out before Brad rolls his eyes? If I like go to Walmart Target and buy you know a hundred hundred and fifty dollar bike, use it to make sure that, I'm, that I like it and stick with it, and then upgrade in six months. Is that going to be able to get me through where I need to be for riding fifty miles without dying? Brit, you can answer that one. For yeah, last week. I I wouldn't. Um, I would go on the used marketplaces and find a good quality bike for 150 bucks used instead. Okay, Brad. I would say trying to cycle 50 miles on like a uh, Walmart quality bike is going to be substantially more difficult. And the other thing, I just want you to go spend a too much money on a bike that you don't know if you're going to use because you'll then be fully committed and you can't back out. You'll be like, I bought this thing. I'm going to use it. <laughs> I know. That's why I can't do it. I can't. Do it. I, I want to give you zero outs, if, like if, no outs. If Lisa came to me and said, I want this $3,000 bike, I'd say, 
all right, let's budget. Let's get it. You want it. If I want to buy a hundred and twenty dollar bike, I I can't I can't do. It. I used to be able to. Like I used to have no problem spending money, but man, I hate spending money on myself. I had the same question when I started cycling too, because I hadn't ridden in fifteen or so years, and I said to all the people I know, "Well, can't I just go out and buy a hundred and fifty dollar Walmart bike?" And they mm -hmm. said, "No." Yeah. All it's, right. It's well, you know, being the cheap that I am, let's go look at real bikes. I'll go buy a used one. Well. Then I look at used ones and you're still looking at 150 bucks for a decent used one at least. Yeah. But now how, how old is it? Right. How loud is it? So you start looking at replacing gears and getting tune ups and there's another hundred, hundred and fifty dollars Okay. Now we're at $300 for a used bike. So and Jay, what Britt is really saying is you do need the Ferrari bike. I do. You do. So I gave in and bought a, a good road bike that I bought the previous year's model. So I came at a hefty discount. Um, and I thought, yeah, okay, great. It's a bike. It's fine. And then I went on a vacation and borrowed a mountain bike from someone. And that really made me realize how big of a difference a road bike is to ride compared to a mountain bike. Cause I'd always grown up on mountain bikes and thought yeah. no, nothing of it. Right. But having the right bike fitted for you makes a huge difference on your enjoyment of cycling and your knee problems yeah. and your knee problems. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I was, I was going to go with a hybrid bike was my, yeah, like a gravel bike. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then what is the number one up, like number one thing that I need to look for? Cause I, I was looking at a track. I mean, is like the seat, like Brad said, you're asking so do I need to, no, you just get those fancy pants. I, I'm not going to wear any of that. I will. Wear you that. have to No. 100%. Have you seen that would picture? you ride a, would you ride a horse without horse gear? Yeah, in jeans. I ride in jeans. Yeah, but you have a saddle on the horse. Well, yeah, I have a seat on the bike. I'm not just sitting on a peg. Yeah, but the the <laughs> pants you wear are part of the seat. No, no, they're not. 100%. No. I mean, they make I'll, a huge I'll... difference. Yeah, no. You can wear them under your under your day shorts. Have you guys seen that picture of Brad Morgan next to his bike in his yellow little spandex outfit on Facebook? I can't I can't have that happen to me. I still want to have that blown up into a life-size cardboard cutout. Actually, Brad, I have an office starting the first. Can I can I have money to have that picture made into a life-size cardboard cutout and put in the background of my office? No. Okay, we're doing it anyways, and we'll be rolling you. <laughs> He's gonna hate me. All right. So we got some questions now. It's like now, Jay's being demoted to I don't want to buy you're making me buy a five hundred dollar bike. Yeah, but that's well, how you I'm making you spend your own day. The cycling was your call. What? Yeah. I mean, you, you could run a half marathon instead. The cycling was your choice. I could do it on a unicycle. I saw a unicycle the other day for sale and thought about how wicked awesome that would be, but I don't think I have the balance for it. I, I know I don't, but I would love to say I did to just be like, ah, you register for a marathon with your unicycle. That'd be awesome. I mean, that would be pretty dope. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Yeah. Um, Dante said his main problem with running was that he was not eating properly to maintain himself after daily running. How common are refueling issues with casual run with recreational runners? Um, common, common. <laughs> That's I think you... the, the bigger issue for most people is they tend to overeat. So we see people take up running and they gain weight which makes it harder to run. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't there a formula like for how many pounds you lose? I, I know I've read it from bikes for how many pounds you lose. It increases your, it typically increases your performance by X percentage or something. I remember reading that somewhere. No, but when you um, think about buying bicycles and you're looking at ones that are 17 pounds versus 20 pounds and you're paying three times as much for the 17 pounder, Mm -hmm. You go, well, I could just lose three pounds and have the same efficiency. Huh. That's an interesting way to look at it. Dude, I had literally never thought of it that way, and my brain just exploded. Yeah, that's so much. Wow, you're paying for a bike that's ultra light. You could just lose three pounds. <laughs> wow. Brit just blew my, my brain mind. actually just went poof. Yeah, that's a, that's an awesome comment. So anybody who's a cyclist, a, a cyclist, and is like, "Wow, I really want this ultra light, this ultra light bike that's three pounds lighter that costs fifteen thousand dollars." Save your money, come to coaching for three months, and lose eight pounds. Yeah, 
So we are more efficient at improving cycling than a $20,000 bike. Yeah. You'll also, basically, if you want to look at it, we're giving you better return on your money. So we're like a bank. Except for banks are not giving you great return on your money right now. No, we're better than a bank. Much better. And if Brad knows my my fiasco with Wells Fargo that I just went through, so we're way better than Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo's not the great. Worst, the worst organization in the United States of America. Terrible. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Josie called it a dead mill, a dread mill. Dread mill, yeah. Uh, do burpees count? Do burpees that was count? my second choice for hate, most hated cardio, for sure. Okay. But that's not really cardio, is it? If you do it for an hour, I was it's just going to say CrossFit, but <laughs> yeah, I would, I, I, I would go with that too. Did I ever tell you about the one time I did CrossFit? <sighs> was, that was, I would have paid money to watch that. Yeah, it was horrible. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with CrossFit. People who like it like it. I don't. I'm not saying anything that's wrong. It's just not for me. Uh, I agree with Britt. I can run ten miles outside and can't do five minutes on the treadmill. And here, Leanne also agrees. I agree with Britt. Anything indoor is the worst form of cardio. It is so boring. I have to be outside for cardio. It's Dante told me to get a nice bike. And then, oh, when he was, he's five minutes, he's 1,600 calories when uh, he was running. Yeah, that's probably not enough. There are definitely people that underfuel. Um, and that, that'll that be a big problem as well. But um, for the majority of people, it tends to be overfueling. When you think about it, we go do these five and these 8K runs. And at the end of the run, they have this amazing smorgasbord of all this great food. Mm -hmm. And a 30-minute run burned a couple hundred calories at best. Yeah. Well, that's a third of the Costco muffin that you're going to grab. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I've never been to a Costco, so I don't know. Are their muffins good? Oh, their muffins are the best. Everybody always, everybody always brings up these Costco things on this show. I don't understand why every single person. Corey too brought up. Oh, you guys live by, <laughs> by, by uh, the only place. Costco, but yeah, yeah. There are there's a few ways you can eat Costco muffins. The poppy seed <laughs> ones, you can eat them either frozen, like you freeze them and then you let them thaw and you eat them when they're like still kind of frozen, or you have to squish them and then eat them. Can you describe your squishing and shoving in your mouth action really quick for me? Can you squish and then he shoves in the mouth? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Frank, um, podcast, you need to come, you to go to YouTube and watch the replay of Brad shoving muffins. In the yes. Mouth. The chocolate muffins, you have to have them in the fridge and you have to eat them cold, but not frozen. They can never be frozen. Um, the blueberry ones, nah, you just eat those room temp because they're blueberry. Thank you for that. <laughs> So those are the four ways you eat Costco muffins. And those are the only four ways you can eat Costco muffins. If you heat them up, it's heresy. What Pure if I heresy. put it into a blender and just drink it? I mean, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I think I think you end up like seeing a therapist after that. Yeah, probably before if you're thinking about just blended random things. <laughs> oh, Jay, I forgot to tell you. I found a gift for you for your new office. Oh, God. Is it just a picture? Is it a picture of you with a trench coat wide open with nothing on underneath it? No, no. I am going to put this in the oh, the private chat. If it, do you think it'll display pictures in here? No. no. I will send it. I will send the picture to your phone. Okay. Because I feel like this is what you need. Oh my god! I mean, uh, is this appropriate for me to share on the air? Oh yes. I just feel like shipping might be a little expensive. Okay. <laughs> it's just a big a, 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 uh, hold on let me open this up and show so you feel like that's like a thomas jefferson chair you yeah, know that's legit and i want it and now i hate you because i have to buy this it's only like 170 bucks yeah i need that <laughs> just I, that's like you to a that's the dopest chair i've ever seen it's pretty awesome i need that in my life really bad Brad, can I have $150 to decorate my office? <laughs> like, <laughs> Only if you buy this chair. I work on rollers. It's not even. Oh, you can replace the bottom. I want the, the uh, was it an impression? Is that like supposed to look like a Monet? I don't know anything about art. I like, have no idea. Impressionistic art piece behind it. I don't know. All right. Britt, thank you for coming on today. It has been nothing but an absolute pleasure. Brad, you were just annoying as always. Uh, but, you know, 
we've only i think we've i think you and i have talked four times today before this already that's true it's been a long day of phone calls um yeah. So, Britt, do you have anything that you wanted to uh, get out and say or any anything at all? I mean, I'm, not, I'm not pressuring you to say anything. If there's anything you want to talk about that we didn't, um, anything? Uh, the only thing I'd probably add to all that discussion is that um, you don't have to be an athlete to accomplish any sort of endurance sport. So I think a lot of times people get hung up on that, that big fancy word athlete and they think I'm not an athlete and I'll never be an athlete. So I'm not going to do any of this stuff. But you don't have to be an athlete to run a half marathon or a marathon or take up biking or swimming. Um, you don't have to want to be competitive. You can just do things for the sake of enjoyment as well. So there's really a, a broad range and cardio can be for anyone, not just people who love running. Perfect. Perfect. I agree. And real quick, Britt, who was your, when you, when you, before you came to Macros Inc., were you already doing endurance training or was that one of the reasons that you came over to us? No, I came over to Macros Inc. to lose weight. And then um, about six months in, I said, well, I need a challenge. This is too easy. So I saw a flyer for triathlons and went, all right, I'll go do that. So, so you had never done endurance training like on this on the level you do now before you were. No, not at all. I shot Brad, a, Brad Morgan a text and said, can I be ready to run a 5K in three weeks? He's like, no. I said, okay, but I'm going to do it anyway. He's like, all right, well, let's figure out how to do that safely. <laughs> so, so, and that was my, so Brad, so you came in with one goal you've worked with, you developed naturally through coaching your own new goals. And then, yeah. and then, and then Brad, who is, you know, one of our coaches, obviously helped you develop this passion that you have now for endurance sports, right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. So so for mm -hmm. anybody out there who's who's like, well, I want to go with macros inc for coaching, don't think that it has to be, you know, obviously if somebody we, we try to get our endurance athlete, we try to get all of our clients with appropriate coaches. Britt is one of our endurance athlete coaches. Obviously, Brad Morgan taught Britt. Brad's still here. Um, we have um Kurt, what is Kurt's last name? Uh Ev Evanich. Ivanich. Ivanich is a brand new coach who's coming in for endurance athletes because we have a lot of them. Um, and I know we have two other endurance coaches and I can't remember names off the top of my head. <laughs> I mean, I know names. I can't remember who the other endurance coaches are without looking at my sheet. Um, so if you are interested in endurance coaching, come in. Um, if, if it's something you are a client and something that you're thinking about, talk to your coach about it. Um, we, if, even if your coach isn't like an endurance athlete, we work in tiers. So just because your coach isn't doesn't mean that somebody in their team, in their coaching team is not somebody that can guide them and help you. Um, it's not a one, you know, this is my coach and this is all I can do. You have a whole team aspect with all of coaching. Um, so Britt, on that note, I have, we have one question and then, and then we're done. All right. Are you ready for this, for this question? And you I have, hope so. You have to answer, you have to answer and it can only be in it. And it's, and it's, and you, ha you have to give a full answer, but no justification. Okay. So just an answer, no justification. And I'll mute your mic if you start to justify. Who is your least favorite? <laughs> Brad knows the question. Who is your least favorite senior Macros Inc. coach, Macros Inc. employee? And the only correct answer is Brad Morgan. You have to answer. The only correct answer is Brad Morgan. Who is your least favorite person at Macros Inc.? I think my mic is broken. <laughs> oh, man. She oh, win. Man, you're the only person who's never answered. Um, Jay, I think she just beat you. Yeah, I don't like this game. You know what, Brett? You're you're hidden. You're hidden from view now. <laughs> it's just so rude. See, the problem is, is, is I don't have a least favorite. Everyone's just my favorite. I, yeah, I know. That's why it would have been awesome to say. And Brad's your coach, so he'll just cut your macros down to nothing. So good answer there, Brad. Way to save your food. That's why yeah. it's funny. <laughs> During every time we interview a, a, a new coach, my last question for the interview is, who's your least favorite person at Macros, Inc.? And the only correct answer is Brad Morgan. And they always just laugh and look at me. Funny. So. Poor Brad. He gets well, so Brad much abuse. Brad, Brad, Brad doesn't listen to these, and that's part of the reason that I do this. Because I mean, I, that's also true. Yeah, I want him to listen because I, I, and that's how I know. The more, the more I can make, I, I say something about Brad. I never get a dot 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 text from him or a 
J. So the more you get away with it, the more you realize he's not listening. The more I'm just going to keep doing it just to just to see what he does. So, all right, no, Brad knows I love him very much. So we are all I'm just a, a fun joke. But Brad is a very scary man. I would not want to make him mad in real life. It would no. terrify me. Especially um, when he's wearing his stringer shirts. Especially when he's wearing his index. I don't want him to point at me. <laughs> <laughs> I got for to laugh at that one. That's the first time she cracked a smile at a Brad joke that I've ever seen. <laughs> all right, guys. If anybody's interested in coaching Brad, where do they go? I would probably go to macrozinc.net slash services. And I would sign up immediately. I will I like not that. wait. Because if you wait... Bad things could happen. Like we could have no coaches available. We could have raised the prices to a billion dollars. I don't know. Just don't wait. Brett, did you hear that? Everybody's getting a raise out of Brad's pocket because we're raising coaching prices to a billion dollars. A billion. Yeah. So, all right. And guys. Buy the tool. Yeah, yeah, Brett can get the tool now. It's true. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you very much. It has been a great week. Britt, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time out of your ridiculously busy day with your uh, client load to come and join us. So I'm sorry that you have an extra hour of work today to do now. So, Agreed. The nice chatting. Yep. So thank you very much, everybody. If you have any questions we didn't get to, make a post in the group. Tag Brad Morgan. He loves answering all your questions. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you.